Hey friend, welcome back to the Bible Tract Echoes radio broadcast. I'm Michael McCurry, your host. Thank you for listening today. We've got a lot to discuss and we're going to dive right in in just one moment. Before I go any further, let me thank you for listening. And today I'd love to hear from you. I'd love for you to tell me where you are listening from. We have many podcast listeners. Maybe you listen on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, Stitcher, you name it. Maybe you listen by the radio, over the airwaves. We have so many, uh, for sake of time and my memory, I'm not going to name all of our radio partners, but there are dozens of them. Actually, this program plays on over 105 radio stations nationwide and internationally. And I'd love to hear from you. Maybe, just maybe, you're listening to or watching the video version of this broadcast on YouTube or Facebook. I'd love to hear from you if that's the case today. Day. You can find us on YouTube and Facebook. Just search Bible Tract Echoes if you want to watch the video version. Right now, I'm actually coming to you from the back deck of my former boss. You say, hold up a moment, what's going on? Yes, I have a good enough relationship with my former boss, Pastor Joe Grimaldi, that I'm actually staying at his house for a couple of days here, and that's where I'm recording this week of broadcasts from. I thank you for joining us, whether you're listening, whether you're watching, regardless, I'd love to hear where you are watching or listening from. Text me right now. Here's the phone number, 309 three one six seven two four zero maybe you can send me a picture of where you're listening from you can text me a picture of course maybe send me a selfie or just tell me what radio station what podcast player where are you at and where are you at in the world of course many listeners from liberia to antigua to washington state to florida all over the place I'd love to hear from you. That phone number one more time is 309-316-7240. Let's dive into the Bible study today. We're talking about the ingredients of a good Christian. We're almost all the way through two ingredients. We begin with the amen. The amen. Of course, that word, a word that's used in Papua New Guinea in the Spanish-speaking countries, in Kenya, all over the place. That word has transcended languages, and people all over the place close their prayers with that word, amen, or amen. I'm so excited about the fact that we got to talk about last week. If you missed it, you missed it. You got to go back and listen to it in the archived version on a podcast or on YouTube. But we talked about the first ingredient of a good Christian is the amen or... More precisely, the spirit of agreement with what God says in the Bible. We talked about how the amen has a meaning, has a mandate, a method. Of course, it has a mindset as well. There's a magnitude to that spirit of agreement. And we talked about some reasons why people might not be willing to not even verbally say amen, but might not be willing to, in their mind, be willing to agree with what God has to say. Maybe it's a correctness issue, maybe it's a concentration, a coldness, a callousness issue, but regardless, we all need to have a spirit of agreement with the Bible. Then, we've been talking this week about the second ingredient, the altar, or the willingness to make adjustments to what God tells us in the Bible. We talked about the altar is a place to start. The altar requires sacrifice. The altar is sanctified. The altar is not a sacrament. It's not some ritualistic thing that we do to get close to God. The altar is a place of substitution. And God's altar must be solitary. You can't have your own altars and God's altars. Today we talk about how the altar can be a place of song. It's a place of praise. Let's jump in. Psalm 43 and verse 4. Then will I go unto the altar of God, unto God my exceeding joy. Yea, upon the harp will I praise thee, O God, my God. I'm so glad the altar is not just a somber place. It's not just a place of sacrifice. It's not just a place of separation. No, it's a place of song. It's a place as well of significance. We talked about in the book of Genesis. We read this, I think, on Monday. Genesis 8 and verse 20. 
and Noah builded an altar unto the Lord. Why did he do that? Noah built an altar after he got off of the ark because he and his family were saved alive and alone. The altar is a place of significance. It's a place of remembrance and memorial. Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse number five. And there shalt thou, this is a command of God, and there shalt thou build an altar unto the Lord thy God, an altar of stones. There shall not lift up any iron tool. Thou shalt not lift up any iron tool upon them. Thou shalt build the altar of the Lord thy God of whole stones. And thou shalt offer burnt offerings thereon unto the Lord thy God. And thou shalt offer peace offerings and shalt eat there and rejoice before the Lord thy God. And thou shalt write upon the stones all the words of this law very plainly. Think about this. The altar that the children of Israel were commanded to build here in Deuteronomy 27, it was a place of remembrance. It was a place to remember and memorialize what had gone on before, but it was also a place to see the law of God very plainly, the Bible says. It's a place of significance. The altar is sustained. You say, hold up a moment. I thought Christ was the last sacrifice upon the altar. You mentioned the other day that the veil of separation was rent between the holy of holies and the rest of the world. There should be no need for sacrifice anymore, right? No need for more altars. Look, if you would, at Leviticus chapter 6 and verse 12. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order upon it. And he shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offerings. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. You say, hold a moment. Now, you're a little confused, Brother Micah. This is the Old Testament you're talking about, of course, right? It is, absolutely. But the point I'm trying to make of the altar being sustained is that I'd like you to consider the spirit of adjustment to be always sustained in your life. You may not realize this. I'm being a little facetious, okay? But we will never get to sinless perfection. Never once will we get to a place and a time and our abilities and our uh, standing before God that we never need to make more adjustments. One of the amazing things about the game of golf is that it's such a great paradigm. It's such a great illustration for life because no matter how good you are at golf, you can always be better. Until you can make 18 holes in one, which is never going to happen, you can always be a little better. You say that's an insane standard. Nobody could do that. You're exactly right. And nobody can reach perfection. But we can and will serve, live, and die trying. The altar, the spirit of adjustment. Get this. I'm talking about a mindset. The spirit of adjustment. The willingness to say, to say God, what would you have me to do? Like the fire that was supposed to be sustained and burned on the altar forever in the Old Testament. Today, with you and for, with me, we should be willing to make adjustment in our lives no matter what. This altar, oh yes, it represents adjustment. Exodus chapter 30 and verse 18. Thou shalt also make a laver of brass, and his foot also of brass to wash with all, and thou shalt put it between the tabernacle of the congregation and altar, and thou shalt put water therein. Now, hold up a moment. What is this talking about? In the book of Exodus, chapter 13, these are some of the instruments of the tabernacle. Do you realize that the laver of brass, that a washing pot, very large washing pot, had pure water in it for the people to wash themselves before they approached the altar for the priests to wash themselves? Do you realize as they looked down into that laver of polished brass and they saw the pure water, you know what they would see? in a time and a place where very likely they didn't have as many mirrors or cell phones that they could hold up and put the front-facing camera on and look at themselves. It was one of the few opportunities for a priest to look at himself and to behold himself as if he saw his face in a glass. The altar is a place of adjustment. It's a place where you see yourself and realize who you are and who you are not as you stand before God. The altar is sustained. 
What are some reasons why, though, we might not be willing to use the altar, not only physically at the conclusion of a church service, and I'm not going to get into the altar call and all that type of stuff in a normal church service. What I'm concentrated on right now is not the physical action you take at the conclusion of your church service or whether your church has an altar call or an invitation or what have you. I'm concerned with the spirit, the willingness to make adjustments based off of what God tells you in the Bible. And I'm not just talking about what a quote-unquote man of God preaches when he opens God's word and preaches to you the holy oracles of God. I'm not just talking about a church service. I'm talking about during your devotional time. I'm talking about when God speaks to you in a special way, when you're, when you're just out and about, and he implants in your heart and mind, and he says, son, daughter, there's a change that needs to be made. Do we, spiritually speaking, put a do not disturb sign on the door of our heart? Do we say, put our fingers in our ears and say, la, 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 I don't want to hear that. I sincerely hope not. What are some reasons why we might not be willing to visit even in the altar of our heart? why we're not willing to make adjustments, why we're not willing to approach the altar. Tomorrow on the broadcast, we're going to talk about this second ingredient, and we're going to get into the nitty-gritty of this second ingredient of a good Christian. We talked about the agreement. We talked about the adjustment. We're going to talk tomorrow about why some of us might not be willing to make adjustments as necessary. I'm going to thank you for listening today, but I'm going to encourage you, if you would, to listen tomorrow with a soft heart and open ears because it just might step on your toes. You say, is that your plan? Is that your purpose, Brother Micah? I can tell you this much, friend. The, these thoughts that I'll share tomorrow, they stepped on my toes. They knocked on the door of my heart, and I just want to spread the wealth around a little bit. I just want you to feel a little bit of what I've felt. Oftentimes, when we point a finger, we've got three pointing back at us, and that happens to preachers all the time. It happens to me all the time. I say, thus saith the Lord, and God says, yeah, Brother Micah, I told you too. Join us tomorrow on the Bible Tract Echoes, a radio broadcast. Thank you for listening today. But don't forget to close out your week as we get into this second ingredient of a good Christian. Have a great day for His glory. And God bless. <laughs>